monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Christian Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We're so glad you're with us as we move deep into November, or deeper into November at least, and get ready for the Chicago Bears. It's a 12.02 kickoff central time in Nashville here on Sunday. We're on the air at Titans Radio at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown. Lots to talk about with the Bears, but Amy Wells, one thing passed on Tuesday, and that was the trade deadline. Absolutely so. No better person to ask about it than Titans general manager John Robinson. John, you traded for Desmond King. Why is he a good fit for the Tennessee Titans? I mean, he was a player that, that we liked out of Iowa when he was coming out in the draft, you know, played for Coach Ferentz there, a good football program. Was off to a successful start with his uh, pro career there and uh, with the Chargers. Productive player, mostly in there at slot corner and a kick returner and punt returner. He's an instinctive player. Got good awareness and coverage. He's an aggressive player. He's tough. He can blitz. So it just felt like he was a player that we could utilize his skill set for us defensively and also in the return game. We look forward to seeing Desmond King as a Titan, and we look forward to seeing the Titans take on the Bears. And so as we dive into your regular part of this segment, the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report, let's talk about a Bears team that you haven't seen since 2016, your first year as general manager when the Titans won at Chicago 27 to 21. The Bears don't have one player on their roster today who handled the ball in that game four years ago. So not only is it an unfamiliar opponent, it's a team that's totally turned over. How tough is it to prepare for a team like that? Yeah, anytime you know that you know you're on that cycle when you're playing teams in the NFC that you see you know, once every four years or so, you're having to learn their personnel. Uh, we did play them in the preseason last year, but I would say most of the players that we're going to face probably didn't play in that game I'm at that point in the season. It's a challenge. You know, there's going to be a lot of film study by our coaches, certainly by our players and our scouting staff, trying to get the scouting report together, the game plan together, you know, as we prepare for these guys. When you think about the five and three Chicago Bears, you think about defense. What is it about their defense that impresses you? Uh, the personnel, the scheme's really good, but the personnel is outstanding. You know, they really got playmakers at, at all levels of the defense up front with, you know, Hicks on the inside, Robert Quinn, who they added in free agency on the edge, and then Khalil Mack, who's one of the best, if not the best, edge players in the game. Two really good linebackers with speed and, and instincts and Trevathan and uh, Roquan Smith. And then in the secondary, Eddie Jackson is one of the top safeties in the league. Fuller is an outstanding player at corner. And the rookies making some plays, Jalen Johnson out of Utah for him on the, at, the, at the other corner. The Bears are quarterbacked by Nick Foles at this point in the season. He started against you last November when he was playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Does that help you prepare for Nick Foles? Yeah, I mean, I think you can you can look at the skill set and what his phys physical attributes are. As a player, obviously, it's a different system. It's a different offensive scheme. He's a taller player. He's a really good athlete for a taller player. He's got a good arm. And most importantly, he's won a lot of football games. He's found ways to make plays in crunch time, in crucial situations, in big games. So, you know, having the familiarity with his physical skill set, but knowing out of the moxie that he possesses. It's at least it's something good to kind of have in, a, in our back pocket. What do the Bears like to do on offense? Yeah, they're, they're pretty multiple. You know, Coach Nagy coming from uh, Coach Reed's system there in, in, in Kansas City. They do a lot of stuff, a lot of motion, get the ball in, in their playmakers' hands, obviously. You know, they got a pretty pretty unique tandem at running back, Montgomery, out of Iowa State. He's a tough guy to tackle. Porter Patterson plays back there some, give him the ball. He's good with the ball in his hands. Allen Robinson's a premium receiver. Miller, who played at Memphis, is a really good catch and run player. They got two speedsters in the rookie Mooney and, and Ted Ginn. And then everybody knows about Jimmy Graham, who is a perennial all pro player at tight end. So they got a lot of weapons. They do a lot of stuff uh, offensively to try to keep you on your heels. John, special teams obviously a concern because of two words that you just said a moment ago, and that is Cordero Patterson. I mean, he's an impact player in, in the return game. And, you know, I think the one thing is certainly his physical skill set with his speed, his make miss ability, but the confidence that he has. I mean, he'll bring it out eight, nine yards deep in the end zone because he's confident in his skill set. He's a tough guy to tackle. He gets to he gets to full speed really quickly, sees the field really well. He's instinctive with the ball in his hands. So we'll have to do a good job trying to contain him. For the Tennessee Titans, what will they have to do well to beat the Bears on Sunday? 
Just like we talked about the kicking game, we got to do a really good job, you know, handling handling Patterson. We got to be good execution on our operation with our punts and our kicks. You know, offensively, we got to stick on these guys up front. You know, they, they've got a really good front seven. We got to stay on our blocks. Derek's got to get downhill. We got to take care of the football. Got to be physical with the with this secondary and the and these linebackers because they like to play a physical game. So we got to match that. And then defensively for us, we got to handle handle all the multiples that they throw at you. Got to get pressure on foals. We've got to get off the field on third down. We say it every week, but that's important for us this week to get off the field on third down, get the ball back to our offense. John, let's get a win Sunday against the Bears. That's the plan, Mike. Appreciate you guys. All right, John Robinson, Titans general manager with his Farm Bureau Insurance scouting report of this weekend's opponent. What else is coming up on Titans All Access? Let's take a look. Derek Henry. That's right, the NFL's leading rusher sits down to talk football exclusively with Mike Keith and this week's Nissan Insider. We've also got a feature on a trip to Fort Campbell that helps get the Titans salute to service weekend started. And Mike and Amy go over the three P's, which are the three keys to beating the Bears. But up next on Titans All Access, the return of the Mac. Coach Dave McGinnis goes beneath the surface for a look at why CD is shaking up opposing secondary. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we are going to look at the highly productive day that wide receiver Corey Davis, number 84, had for the Tennessee Titans versus the Cincinnati Bengals. What we're looking at here, this is 12 personnel. Watch the tight end move across the formation. And now what we're going to see, you got a double stack on both sides. Tannehill lets it go down the sideline to Corey Davis. Huge catch down the sideline. Big flip of field position. First down Titans. Watch the pass protection. Very good cylinder to throw from. Tannehill can step into the throw. Big completion. Next play we're looking at, again, we motion over to Tripp's formation. We bring the tight end back across the formation to block on the edge. Now this is off of the play action look. Watch the move off of the play action. You plenty of time. Corey Davis across the field, transcontinental, TRC, big catch, combat catch, first down, Titans. Again, this is 21 personnel now, two backs. Two wides, one tight in the ball game. This is an eye over formation, an eye strong formation. Look at the cut split on the back side, the numbers split at the top side. Again, what we're seeing off of the cut split on the back side is a deep out. This is a timing route that's extremely important. Titans know that now they have man coverage off of this look. You got the eighth man dropping down into the box. You've got man coverage. You got the cut split to the back side. Now it's one on one. This is a timing route and a placement route. Nice catch, strong catch. Corey Davis having a big day. Now we're in the low red zone. We've got 11 personnel in the ball game. This is three wide, one tight, one back. When you look at the formation, you will see that Corey Davis is going to get man coverage now off of this look. This is a chip with the tight end to allow a little extra time to throw. Then Corey Davis matched up one on one on the outside. Watch the footwork. Watch the concentration of Corey Davis going up. This is a hands catch. Look at the throw. Look at the going up and then watch the athleticism being able to drag both feet as he's going out of bounds. Big day for Corey Davis. Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? Send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Welcome back to Titans All Access. The Nissan Insider has been one of my favorite parts of the show for all 18 years. But in this show, even a little better, Amy. It's extra, extra special. Extra, extra special. Because it's the king. It's the king himself. Derrick Henry is our Nissan Insider. That's a good stiff arm. Stiff arm. That was strong. Stiff arm. A lot of great athletes who watch you play 
say, Derrick Henry, wow. Are there athletes that you watch play their particular sport and you say, wow? Um, I was a, uh, well, still is a big uh, Kobe Bryant fan, Kobe Bryant fan, so I always was in awe and wow of him and um, big Danny Thompson fan, same thing, wow with him. And I go on and on, Eddie, I can go on and on about running backs and just about players. Right now, you know, LeBron James, you know, we best playing basketball right now, go you know, wild what he does and incredible, you know, the God given God given talent that we were blessed with and the things we we're able to do with these sports. It's, it's a blessing and you know, um all different sports, a lot of players that you know you can go wild and you know appreciate the greatness that they bring to the sport. Derek this job for you every single week involves a lot of contact. You dish it out, you take it. What is your routine like to take care of your body as you come off a game and move towards the next game? I have a team that I work with to uh, uh, take care of my body, just doing the things that you know I've done week after week that's helped my body prepare. Me doing things here at the facility to give me right. We have great trainers that do a great job. I'll wait until staff do a great job. And, you know, our coaches have a great job taking care of us, make sure we're ready you know, throughout the week. And you know, when you're away from you know, the facility, you got to make sure you know what you need to do to take care of your body. So I have people that you know, help me and make sure my body's right uh, week in and week out. So be ready for Sunday. Derek, how long did it take you to develop that routine as far as taking care of your body? It didn't really, really take me long. I think the more that, you know, you talk to guys who've done it for a long time at a high level and the things that they've done, you know, when you're a young guy, just to see, you know, what they do to keep their body in shape and keep their body where they can play at a high level and see what works for you. And that's what I've done. And I uh, appreciate those guys who, who gave me some ins and outs, what they do to take care of their body week after week. And you know, now I'll have, you know, my routine been working for me and I'll uh, continue to do it. Ran the ball very well at Cincinnati as a team. 29 carries for 118 yards. What did the Titans do well in the run game at Cincinnati that you hope to keep up this week against Chicago? Um, I think it's just uh, mindset. Line did a great job of, you know, dominating the line of scrimmage, um, opening up holes, uh, tight ends. She did a great job of getting on their guys. And us as back to the great job, just making our reason and um, getting downhill. That's all there is to it, is having the will and want to to dominate the man in front of you and putting the hat on the hat. And I feel like the guys did a great job by doing that for us to have success running the ball. You mentioned during several interviews Jeremy McNichols and what a great job he's been doing as your backup. But I saw you congratulate Deontay Foreman at Cincinnati when he went in and ran well. What does it mean to you when a young guy like that goes in, gets a chance, and does the job well like Foreman did? I think it's great. When we first came in this league, he was very effective and um, had success with the Texans. And then, like you know, anybody else, have a little adversary, but he's back now, and um, you know, I'm glad he's, he's with us and, and able to help us. And you know, when you see guys, you know, come in and work hard and then it, it pays off, you know, on the field. It, it motivates you. I think we all motivate each other when we're all having success and able to gain yards and able to help the team. And we all just beat off each other. And uh, those guys are doing a great job. Finally, what's the challenge of taking on the Bears defense for Derrick Henry and the rest of the Titans offense? Yeah, um, they're very physical, very active linebackers. Stout front, um, guys that can rush the passers, fast in the back end, very experienced. So it's a, a, another big challenge for us. And, you know, that's just how it is in this league. And uh, they're a great defense. They play well together. Look forward to Sunday facing a great defense and a great team. All Titans fans, very proud of you and happy for your success, Derek Henry. Thank you for the time and keep up the good work. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Mike Keith, it must be pretty cool to get to sit down and talk to Derrick Henry and ask him some of those questions. Yeah, it was great. It was fantastic. You know what else is great? Going to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The Titans have been doing it since April of 1999 when we took Eddie George up there on the Titans caravan. And with Salute to Service Weekend, we're going back again. That's next. We'll show you on Titans All Access. We welcome you back to Titans All Access. Titans and the Bears on Sunday at Nissan Stadium. It is our salute to service game. Have you got your salute to service gear? I do, and it's very oh. cool. If you if you get a chance to get Titans salute to service gear at TennesseeTitans.com or if you visit the pro shop here, it's 
the best. I can't wait to break out my sweatshirt on Sunday. Oh, me too. And uh, there's no better place to wear that salute to service gear than at Fort Campbell. The Titans headed up to Fort Campbell to thank our soldiers and show our appreciation. And they had a pretty great time. Check it out. Can I get a hat, please? Yes. Thank you. Sweet. We are here today for Warrior Wednesday. Every Wednesday since about 2012, we've delivered a lunch for the soldiers. And today, the Titans did that with Chick-fil-A. We're going to feed about 200 soldiers and give them some Titan swag. Thank you. Thank you guys for your service. We brought the cheerleaders. We brought the mascot. And it's our way to reach out and say thank you for everything that you do and we're real excited to be here. The Titans have always done a really great job of pulling in the military community, but being able to deliver a little bit something extra is really exciting. Salute to service, you know, is, is only one week. Our celebration and recognition and relationship with Fort Campbell and the military installations in and around the Nashville community, it's a year long thing for us. The relationship between Fort Campbell and the Titans is clearly you know, something that resonates on both sides with both communities and is something that is really inspiring to watch. And then as far as the USO, we've been able to do a lot with the team. The Titans are clearly an institution in this community. And so it's really wonderful to be the bridge to bring them into the military community. Our community being such a military community, you know, while this is a league initiative, we kind of take it one step further and really try to hit it out of the ballpark for our soldiers. I think in a year when so many things haven't been able to happen, when so many things have had to be canceled, to figure out a way to yes, a fi to figure out a way to still deliver something so exciting and bring cheerleaders and 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 you know mascots and pictures and and to see people you know smiling with their eyes again, I think it's just there's so much that happened here today. You can't say exciting enough, honestly. This is this has been really fantastic. Mike, it's always a good time when we can spend some time with the soldiers at Fort Campbell. When you go to Fort Campbell and you're on post, you are so proud to be an American because of those men and women, 100% of the time you're there. Our founder, Bud Adams, had us go there in 1999. He wanted us to build that relationship and it has become something extra special between our organization and the men and women on post, the generals, Everybody top to bottom, we love them and we appreciate their love for us as well. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, the best part of the show, Mike Keith and his keys. Wow. I know. You're looking for a raise. It's going to be fun. You're right, though. It's wonderful. <laughs> On the next Titans All Access, Mike and Amy review not one, but two Titans games. That's right, they'll talk about what happened in the Sunday game with the Bears and Thursday's game with the Colts. We'll share a special salute to service Sunday. And John Robinson looks ahead to a crucial stretch of the schedule. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. Mike Keith, the moment has arrived. Give us your keys to beating the Chicago Bears. I call them the three P. Okay. Let's start off number one with precision. The Chicago Bears have the best red zone defense in the National Football League. 30 trips inside their 20 teams have scored only 15 touchdowns. The Chicago Bears are giving up only 30% on third down conversions. They are so good in those tight spaces, in those big situations. If you're gonna defeat them, if you're gonna score touchdowns in the red zone, if you're gonna convert third downs, precision is the key. You have to make sure that the throws are right, the blocks are right, the patterns are run correctly, the ball is caught. Everything that you do offensively against a good defense in the red zone and on third down is about precision. Precision is key number one for the Tennessee Titans Sunday against the Chicago Bears. Well then, Mike, what is the second P? The second P is possessions. Do you realize the Titans only had eight possessions of the football at Cincinnati. The ninth one, maybe you could count that, maybe not, was actually the last play of the game where they ran the ball with Jeremy McNichols. Bottom line, eight possessions, not enough. This is a great Titans offense, and I mean a great Titans offense. They have scored more touchdowns this season than they have punts as a team. That's unheard of. Get them the ball. Where does it start? Third down defense. If you're doing well on third down, you're getting the ball back for your offense. 
the Titans need to have the ball against the Bears 11 or 12 times, especially because the Bears defense is outstanding. Possessions, more possessions, key number two for the Titans in this ball game. All right, what's the final key to beating the Chicago Bears? Power. Power. Derrick Henry coming off the line of scrimmage, blowing him off the ball, blocking downfield, staying with it, and being able to get a lead where you can stay with the power. Bottom line is Titans throw the football really well. It is fun to watch Corey Davis and A.J. Brown and Jonu Smith and on and on and on. And Ryan Tannehill, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But the heart and soul of the Tennessee Titans is running the football. They ran 29 times for 218 yards at Cincinnati. That's a figure that should be good enough to win. It's going to be harder to run this week, but the bottom line is if they can take the momentum from the execution of the run game at Cincinnati and apply it this week, the Titans should be able to control this game. The Titans are about power when they're at their best. They need power against the powerful Chicago Bears defense this weekend. Mike, I like it when your keys have a theme. I feel like I can play along and try to guess what the words are going to be. That was nice. Thanks. I try to work on a theme every week. I appreciate that. That's very mm -hmm. fun. Great. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, a theme. The three Ps. These are a theme. Remind you that the Titans play the Bears Sunday at Nissan Stadium, 12.02 Central Time kickoff. Amy Wells and our entire Titans radio crew and me come on the air at 11 a.m. Central with Titans Countdown. We hope you'll join us for that. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.